You and I have both seen videos or testimonies of kids who are now regretting this process and want to detransition. Of all the people I've seen, and I'm not ex an expert in this field, I have to say, but of all the people I've seen involved in this entire phenomenon, they are probably the highest candidates, most likely candidates for suicide because they've made this, this enormous and in some cases profoundly regret regrettable decision at the tender age of 16 with their life, whole life ahead of them. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's certainly true that one of the big problems is the lack of informed um, psychological and social support for detransitioners. Be, you know, the, those are, the, these are young people who often were totally immersed in trans world. All their friends were, you know, in that, in that world. Once they detransition, they tend to be rejected. They lose their friends. Um, and as you say, they, they suffer um, a lot of sense of remorse. Um, they, you know, feel it's a terrible mistake that they've made. Uh, they need a lot of help. Mm. Well, Bernard, figures are hard to come by, but uh, do you have any, uh, any idea how many kids are being treated for this condition in Australia at the moment? No, but there's some freedom of information data from the three large children's hospital gender clinics. I mean, just one indication of how the, you know, this explosive growth in this condition, which is what's worrying a lot of people, is that the Royal Children's Hospital in Melbourne, the largest and most influential gender clinic, had just 18 new referrals in 2012. In 2021, they had 821 new referrals. So from 18 in 2012 to 821 in 2021. And that's Melbourne, that's uh, Australia's yeah. biggest clinic, correct? Yes, that's right. And, and those, these are those all are patients new... under 18? Yes, they would be, um, yes, they are under 18. Because I think at age 17, the clinic starts to transition them the adult clinic. So, and what are the legal requirements along the way? The family court is or was involved at some stage, wasn't it? That's right. It used to be the case that any under 18 trans medical interventions, puberty blockers, opposite sex hormones, or surgery, um, even if the doctors and the parents agreed that the kid was competent to give informed consent, they had to go to the family court and get approval. And the Royal Children's Hospital and various trans lobby groups argued that that was discriminatory, uh, that non-trans people didn't have to go to court for treatment. And so a series of, you know, there were a number of test cases run. And the effect of that is that the family court now does not get involved unless there's a dispute between the parents or between the parents and the doctors about whether the kid really has gender dysphoria, whether the treatment is the right one, the treatment being recommended, um, and whether the kid has the capacity to give informed consent.